that way. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> right by the body. Everybody loud. Huh? <laughs> Check, 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 Mike check, Mike check, okay. Mike check. Mm -hmm. Good. All right, a couple of reminders before we get going with the press conference is um, when you're called upon, please speak into the microphone and say your name and affiliation uh, before you ask your question. Uh, if you can direct your question to one of the uh, student athletes uh, initially, be appreciated. And a reminder that there is no video to be shot in the press conference area. If you want to utilize press conference video, you need to hook into the machines that are in the electronic media room. So with that, wish you good morning and welcome to the NCAA Division I Men's Basketball Tournament first and second round games in Portland, Oregon. This is the practice day press conference for Memphis. Joining us on the dais are student athletes Jalen Duran, Alex Lomax, and DeAndre Williams. A uh, reminder that we'll first take questions from the media room and then after that we will ha have questions that are asked by our attendees that are on Zoom. Welcome to Portland, welcome to the NCAA Tournament and this time we will open it up to questions. Go ahead. Uh, Mike's not on. Mike not on. Testing. There you go. All right, so this is for any of you guys. Has it set in yet that you guys are here and that you're playing in the NCAA tournament tomorrow? For the, it's the first time for all you guys, right? So has it, has it set in? Well, for me, it didn't early on, but as soon as I sat down right here, it did. Same thing for me, uh, you know, just being up here with my teammates right now, being in front of y'all, in front of the bright lights, um, it's starting to set in a lot more. The same thing they just said, um, it, it kind of sat down uh, with me as soon as I sat down. Um, amazing feeling, and uh, I'm really ready to make some noise with my teammates. All right, DeAndre, Steven Johnson, Daly Memphian, I think you're the only one up there that played against Boise last year. What do you remember about that matchup, and are there any differences you've seen this year? Uh, no, nah, not really. Um, I mean, they're pretty much the same team. Um, they play very well. They uh, well coach. Uh, they poise. They run their stuff right. Uh, it's just going to be a real good matchup. And, you know, uh, with the success they had, you know, this year, um, we just got to come in locked in and, and just ready to play. Hey, Lo, this is for you. Cassie Carlson, Action News 5 in Memphis. Did you grow up watching Willie Kemp play in the NCAA tournament? And what's it been like working with him as a grad assistant? And have you talked to him at all about what it's like to be on this big stage? Yeah, um, I was eight years old um, in 2008. And that's when Willie was in the tournament uh, with D. Rose and the special team. And um, I just always saw the energy that he played with and uh, the passion and everything. Um, and he's been a great mentor to me this year. Uh, our relationship has gotten very stronger on and off the court. And uh, he's done a great job of just helping me be a better leader and uh, you know, talking to my teammates and with communication. And um, it's very special, uh, the feeling that he had back then. Um, you know, we're just trying to get that same feeling that he had and, and you know, do, the, do some special things like he did back in 2008. Jalen's uh, oh, Brian Hamilton from The Athletic. What are the, the biggest ways you've evolved and grown this year uh, in terms of how you've kind of met your own expectations? Um, just, just understanding the college game a lot more. Um, coming out of high school and jumping right into college, it was, a, it, was a, um, it was a transition. It was a huge transition I had to get used to, but guys like Alex and, and DeAndre have been great leaders to me and just helping me and helping me grow throughout the season, uh, which I feel like I'm very appreciative, very appreciative for. And I feel like I've grown in all areas, like in terms of just understanding the game, in terms of my, my, my personal skill set, in terms of just team college basketball. And can I just follow up with Alex and DeAndre? Can you sort of talk about what you've seen, the biggest growth in Jalen across this season? Uh, the biggest growth from Jalen uh, is his mental. Uh, he came in with a great mindset uh, from day one. And um, just to see from day one and now, uh, he's, he's learned the game. He's learning the game of basketball. Um, he's learning the physicality of the game, and uh, he's approaching everything the right way. And uh, he's very humble. Uh, he's a humble beast. And uh, just to see the work that he put in off the court and on the court every day um, is, is showing. And um, I feel like he got a lot more to show. And he, we really haven't seen the best version of him yet. We've seen small flashes, but um, it, I feel like it's time now. Uh, basically, oh, go ahead. Yeah, basically what uh, the general just said, um, 
Um, amazing talent. Um, the, the, the guy just, he just, he's just amazing, man, what he does on the floor, off the floor, um, how he attacked the game with his mindset. Um, he just really locked in on winning and, you know, making history. And that's the one thing, you know, I like about him, uh, his mentality. And, you know, every time he steps on the floor, he's ready to play. And he motivates all his teammates. Jeff Conkin. Jeff Calkins from the Daily Memphian for Alex. You were talking about watching the team in 2008. What do you remember of that, being a little kid watching this team in the tournament? And what then does it mean for you to lead this team into this tournament again? Um, you know, it was, a, it was uh, a very long time ago. But one thing I do remember, um, is there was a lot of winning going on. And, uh, you know, the more the Tigers win, the happier the city is. And um, there's just something that, a feeling that I could remember uh, back when my family, my uncles and my aunties just being very excited every time the Tigers was playing. And um, every time they got a win in March Madness, um, the city would just go crazy. Um, you know, everybody would tune in and the energy uh, would just be aesthetic. And, um, you know, a couple of years later, here I am, uh, really never expected to be in this seat when I was eight years old watching the Tigers play. But, you know, God kind of, you know, blessed me. Uh, Coach Penny, everybody blessed me to be in this situation. And um, I just want to leave it all out on the court, uh, give it all I got. Uh, just be the best teammate that I can be uh, to everybody on the court and on my team. John Mallory from uh, KTIK Sports Radio in Boise. And if we could just start with you, Jalen. Um, just seeing what you've seen from Boise State, your opponent on tape, what impresses you the most with how they play? Um... Seeing the uh, film that I've seen, um, they're, they're an older team, which means they understand the game a lot more. Um, I think, like DeAndre said, they're really poised. They run their, they run their plays. Um, they, they seem like they, they play together. They're really, they, they got a great chemistry, it looks like, on film. And, like, they had a lot of success this year. So, like, obviously I wasn't there last year, but seeing them this year, seeing the type of team they are this year, it looked like they, they're a well-coached team and they, they know what they're doing. Jay Tuss, KTVB out of Boise. Jalen, this one's for you as well. Uh, going up against a guy like Miladin Armush tomorrow, number 33 for Boise State. Uh, he, he's, he's almost 24 years old. What type of challenge will his veteran presence be? And Boise State's also been extremely good um, on the offensive glass and rebounding in general. So what type of challenge will that be for you guys as well? Uh, I mean, for me, I've, I've been dealing with it all year. Honestly, it's nothing new to me. I don't look at no age. I don't look at no size. I don't, that's, to me, it's basketball. I feel like... I mean, I got confidence in myself. I know what I bring to the table, and I know what my teammates bring to the table. So honestly, I feel like no matter the age, size, whatever it is, I feel like we're going to come out and do our thing. In back here. Uh, for DeAndre and Alo, uh, there was a bittersweet feeling on Sunday after losing to Houston when you heard your name called for the NCAA tournament. Over the past few days, has that changed into any sort of motivation that it's turned into, or how has that kind of evolved over the days? Um, I mean, it was, it, it definitely uh, made us exciting. Um, we not finishing the season the way we didn't, we didn't want to finish. Uh, I mean, we, we got this opportunity to play in the tournament. And so, uh, God just blessed us with a, uh, another situation that we can, you know, seize the moment. And so, you know, we're very exciting. We're coming in, you know, very motivated. And, you know, we want to make some noise and, and show the world that, you know, I mean, even though we, you know, finish the season like that, we can, you know, still make something happen. Uh, basically the same thing DeAndre just said. Um, it was a bittersweet moment. But you got to look at everything like a blessing. Uh, you know, the season's still going on. Uh, we're in the biggest tournament in the country right now. Uh, we got a chance to do something special. And, uh, you know, our last game was an L. So, you know, it's still sitting on everybody's heart and our mindset real heavy. And, um, you know, we want to come in and try to change that and just, just go harder. We didn't, we didn't give our last performance the way we wanted to. So we got a chance to redeem ourselves, and um, that's something that I feel like everybody on the team really want to do. In front. Question for uh, Dre and Jalen. Uh, Dre, you just called Alo the general. Name affiliation, please. Oh, Stephen Johnson, Daily Memphian. Um, I know Alo's nickname is the general. So just for you two guys, what does he do for you guys on both ends? And just what have you kind of seen from him on this stretch when you guys won 12 or 14 games? Um, basically, uh, just you know, controlling everything uh, when things get rattled. Um, he basically, you know, try to, you know, put us in a huddle and it's just like try to calm us down, you know, um, and that's what he does uh, when everything is, you know, trying to get out of place. He, he calm everybody down and, you know, he get us into something. 
And that's why we call him the general because he, he bring that poise and that leadership uh, at the point guard spot. And we just, you know, try to follow his lead. Whatever he, you know, he's asking or he calling, I mean, we listen to him. So um, he's an extension of the coach. And, um, you know, we following his lead. For me, um, when I first got here, I heard, I heard everybody call him the general. I didn't really understand, like, what it meant until I got on the floor with him. And kind of he really embraces that nickname just in the way that like, he controls the tempo. He runs the show for our team. And he's just been a great leader for me personally, just helping me, like I said before, just understand the game and be, be more comfortable in the game. So when it comes to him being a general, he really does embrace that, that nickname. Jay Tuss, KTBB, uh, either of you can answer this, but um, you know, at one point in time, Boise State was one game under 500 this year. At one point in time, you guys were too at eight, at eight and nine. What was the turning point in your guys' season and, and how much confidence are you playing with right now? Um, I feel like the turning point um, was just, just getting closer off the court for us, uh, just becoming more of a brotherhood, um, learning each other stories um, a lot more. And um, I feel like once we kind of did that, um, you know, shout out to Willie Kemp too. Um, a couple of times we just went, up, went over his house and just hung out his boys, hung out his brothers, um, and got to know each other a lot more. And um, I feel like kind of ever since that day and those moments, uh, we got a lot closer um, off the court and we built a, a lot of trust on the court also. Before we get to the question back, just want to double check, are there anybody in the Zoom who would like to ask a question? I don't see anyone, so go ahead. Jalen again, Brian Hamilton from The Athletic right here. From a strictly basketball sense, like on floor stuff, where did you want to improve this year and, and what have you done to improve just strictly from that basketball specific skill area? Uh, I say in all areas, honestly. I say on both ends of the floor, offensively and defensively. Um, Coach Hardaway and Coach Brown, Coach Top, all the they, all the coaches definitely helped me like, improve my game on both ends of the floor, on defense, on offense, on um, just my 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 personal skill set. And I feel like coming into the year, that was a big thing for me. I just wanted to learn a lot more. I wanted to develop my game, and I feel like throughout the season, they helped me a lot with that. Go ahead. Jason Munns with the Commercial Appeal, and this is for anybody. How's Penny been the last few days? Penny and, and Coach Brown, and like how have they, are they, just what's their demeanor been like and their attitude coming here and getting ready for this? Um, I'll say they uh, motivated more than ever. Um, and they just, you know, try to, you know, tell us what we do wrong and at the same time how we can fix it. And that's their greatness on, you know, what they, they approach and how they, you know, approach the game. Um, they're great basketball minds, uh, they're legends. And uh, just to learn from them each and every day is, is just a blessing for all of us. And um, they just, you know, elevate our game just off the knowledge they know. And, you know, we, we just keep getting better just, you know, how they teach the game and, you know, how they help us. Down in front here, and this will be our last question. This is for DeAndre, Dave Willosh in Memphis Radio. You're the only guy that was on the team last year that was playing because of the injury to, to Alo. Mm -hmm. You said Boise is very much the same team. Are you the same team, or how is this team different? Uh, I wouldn't say we're the same team. Um, we, we got a lot uh, more talent, um, and we got a lot of different pieces that, you know, come together, and we just – I mean, I can't even really explain it. This team here is just, it's, it's special. And um, I really feel like, you know, in this tournament, we can really do something uh, amazing just off who we have, uh, the coaching staff and everything like that. But this this matchup, it, it, it's going to be beautiful. And um, we're going we're gonna to go out there and give it all. All right, Jalen Duran, Alex Lomax, DeAndre Williams, thank you very much. Thank Good you. luck tomorrow. Yeah. We'll have Coach Hardaway on the dais momentarily.
With us on the dais now is Memphis coach Penny Hardaway. Coach, welcome to Portland. Uh, any opening statement you'd like to make? I'm just happy to be here. Thanks uh, for having us, and uh, we're excited. All right, we'll uh, open it up to questions. We'll begin right here in front. Penny, Jason Munns with the Commercial Appeal. Um, you seem in much better spirits than the last time we saw you. So is that <laughs> what have the last couple of days been like for you? Are you kind of setting in that you're here at, after four years? Is your you're here now. Yeah, but you know the competitive side of me wanted to win the conference championship. Uh, it was kind of a bittersweet day because we didn't win, but we also got selected. The next day, I had forgotten about the conference championship and, and was thankful to even be here. You know, you out of all people know how far we've come to even be in this position. And uh, yeah, I'm enjoying it. I'm taking it all in. Cassie Carlson, Action News Five in Memphis. Penny, what's no. the anticipation like? as a coach leading into your first game uh, compared to what it was as a player in the tournament? You know, it's kind of similar. I mean, obviously I'm not, when I was a player, I knew I had to do so much more on the court. For me, the preparation is still the same because I have to prepare my team. Being, a, you know, the point guard or the guard on the team or the, the better player, the best player on my team, just kind of preparing my mind for different scenarios, different situations, not trying to overthink it because, you know, it's still a basketball game, but also to be prepared like I was when I was a player. So I'm, I'm def I've watched six games of Boise and uh, just trying to get everything in my mind so when the game starts, it'll just be kind of staying on my brain. Penny, Brian Hamilton from The Athletic. Where do you see the biggest growth in Jalen as a player from when he stepped in the door last summer to where he is now? I think the biggest growth for him is his respect for how hard it is on this level. I think when he came in, he felt like it had been so easy for him in high school that he thought it was going to be easy on this, on this uh, side of the ball, but it, it hadn't been early. And he's respected it a lot more, had more respect, and he's taken it more serious than he, uh, than he ever has because a couple guys, more than a couple guys, have surprised him this year that he played against that didn't have big names. And that made him think, hey, man, this level is a lot harder than I think it was going to be. I got to get in the weight room more. I got to start watching film more. I got to work on my game more because my normal game that I brought in is just not going to be enough. So his growth has come because of all those things. Jay? Jay Tuss, KTVB Boise. Uh, Penny, when uh, you look at Boise State's roster, they're a very ex experienced team. They've been really good in close games this season. Mm -hmm. uh, from what you've seen, uh, why do you think they've had success in those moments? Toughness. Toughness and chemistry. You know, I think they believe in one another. They have a great system. They run it like a well oil machine and their toughness. I think they get gritty when it gets down you know, to the last parts of the game. They don't give up anything easy on defense, and then they create plays for each other on offense. Bob Beeler, Bronco Radio Network, uh, wanted to know what you thought of both your team and their team. You faced each other in the NIT last year. You're obviously both better this year because you're in this tournament. So where do you think you guys are better, and where do you think they're better? Uh, I think we're better because of the run we made. Obviously, we had more promise earlier in the season and it didn't live up to the billing like we should have and had to take a harder route. Uh, Boise played phenomenal to me all season, won the conference championship and the regular season championship. So they're different because now they're champions coming into the, uh, the NCAA. So for us, with us winning 12 out of 14, with them winning both, the confidence is high in both teams. In the back. Uh, Orlando Sanchez, KGW TV here in Portland. Uh, Coach, from a local perspective, just your initial thoughts on being here in Portland, wondering if you have any memories from you know, your playing days or working with Nike on Portland in general. Well, obviously, if you know my, my history in, in, in the NBA, just Nike is so instrumental in my career uh, with Little Penny and having my own signature shoe line. So I've always loved coming to Portland to, uh, to go to the Nike meetings obviously to play against the Trailblazers, which was always hard to do. And then I just remember all those, that long flight to get here. But once I got here, man, the beauty of the city is, is unreal. So I've always loved coming here. In the back. Go ahead. Penny, Steven Johnson, Daily Memphian. I see you brought Imani and the rest of the red shirts on the trip. Is there any chance we could see him playing tomorrow? I don't know. You know, to be very honest with you, I told the media a long time ago, that we didn't know what would happen. We brought everybody because it's an experience that everybody should be a part of, especially the guys that are going to come back next year. You know, you get here, you feel it, you see it, and when you get into June, guys start believing and understanding what it takes to get here because this is a beautiful thing. So we wanted everyone to experience it. Up. 
Microphone up front. Yeah, Penny, uh, Boise Sports Talk Radio, John Mallory. Have you, you know, the advantages, I'm sure there are many with having Larry Brown on your staff, just the legend and savant he is. Where has he helped you most as a coach? Uh, he's helped me in a lot of areas, uh, obviously with um, early offense, just ideas on early offense, um, believing in my values and just make sure I hammer, hammer those in and don't, don't ever go away from those. Um, you know, uh, how to handle the shoot arounds, what to really focus on, what are we running on makes, what are we running on misses, how to get into pressure different ways without letting people see the pressure coming. Uh, and just talking about just years and years of every, he's been in every scenario in a game that you can imagine. Just being over on the bench in different scenarios, just having him there to just bounce things off of during the timeouts. Mark Giannato from the Commercial Appeal. Uh, going back to that answer you gave to Steven, does that mean there's a possibility Amani could return tomorrow? I don't, I don't, I mean, he hadn't played, so I, I don't know. You know what I mean? He's here, and he, like, he's been practicing some, but has never played. Like, come back to see how his back feels. This has been going on for like four weeks, five weeks, so he came on a trip just like everyone else, and, and we just don't know. And, and then just in general, because this is the first time for – I think everyone but Chandler has never played in an NCAA tournament game before. Just dealing with the nerves, anticipation of a, you know, of a big game. You've played in a lot of big games. What will you tell them ahead of this to kind of, you know, to make sure they're playing, you know, their best? I would just say let your defense, your defense travels. You don't have to have nerves with defense and, and rebounding. You know, I think that the offensive side of the ball brings the nerves, but I think if you just continue to believe in the game plan discipline of who we are, our identity, then uh, nerves will be there, but they will surely go away as soon as the game starts, as long as you believe in that. That'll help. Jeff Calkins from the Daily Memphian and Penny over here. Um, Ayla, when he was up here, talked about watching the Tigers when he was a little kid and their tournament runs. I presume you watch the Tigers on their tournament runs. What's it mean to be able to deliver that kind of a day to the city again after all this time? It means a lot because I remember when I was in elementary school, the teacher just wheeling in the TV and turning the tube on and us watching the, the, uh, the NCAA tournament. So to be able to give that to the kids back home and to the city back home is it's a dream come true, to be honest, because I know how big it is when the Tigers are playing in the NCAA tournament and how the city is all tuned in. They're all tuned in. Jay. Jay Tess, KTVB Boise. Um, Penny, when you look at last year's matchup, there's a lot of similar pieces for Boise State. One big difference, though, is the presence of Abu Kijab, number 24 for the yes. Broncos. Uh, <laughs> what, do you, what do you think of uh, him as a player and um, maybe also his instincts as well? Yeah, amazing. You know, just watching the games because I didn't watch Boise a lot this season. I knew they were playing really well and I knew they were good from last year, but I didn't know that they had added him. And, man, the plays that he's made, Playing the passing lanes, uh, the drives, the, the energy, the timely plays, the timely offensive rebounds, his athleticism, his speed, he's, he's a force to be reckoned with. I have a lot of respect for him. You know, I, I appreciate guys that just go out and leave it on the floor, and that's what he does. Steven Johnson, uh, Daily Memphian. Alo was up here earlier, and he said uh, uh, Willie Kemp kind of helped bring the team together. They spent a lot of time in his, at his house and things like that. What impact has he kind of made on the players, and was that kind of why you brought him on earlier this year? Yeah, I think the impact that he's made is because he was uh, he was on the the, the, uh, the team that played in the uh, in the final four and in the finals against Kansas. He was a starting point guard. He's from the Bolivar area, which is only like an hour outside of the city, so he can kind of have some similarities there. It's from being like almost a local kid that understands what it means to be from the area and then take your team into the NCAA tournament. And then he's just a great great guy that bleeds blue. So he's always going to be positive with the guys. And that is one of the reasons why I brought him back, because he's a former player. He started on the, one of the better teams that ever played in, uh, in school history, and he's been here. In the back? Penny, uh, over here. Tim Booth from the Associated gotcha. Press. Um, you talked about the, what it means to the community. I'm wondering, does it feel different as a, as a coach taking a team to a tournament versus going as a player? And do you have a memory that sort of stands out from your opportunity to play in, in the tournament as a player? Yeah, it's, it's different as a player than, than as a coach because that's your job, you know, to, to get the team to the NCAA tournament as a coach. As a player, you're just playing. You're fighting hard for every game, for every win. And when you get there, you're like, okay, let's go out here and win as a team. As a coach, you're building your entire team around getting here. And uh, that's the difference. And my, my fondest memory is going to the Elite Eight 
in my first year uh, as a sophomore playing in the NCAA tournament. We played Pepperdine, Arkansas, and Georgia Tech and beat those three teams. So that, that was one of the most fun, funnest times I've ever had as a basketball player, including NBA, going on that run. Penny, Brian Hamilton from The Athletic again. You kind of mentioned before with Jalen, he had those sort of aha moments, the reality checks. What, what, what were those moments that stood out to you where he kind of, that changed his mentality? It's like you said, he knew he had to do a little more. Yeah, I think early on, not taking the, the, the pick and roll defenses seriously, uh, not studying enough his opponent, just trying to go in the game and make it up on the fly, uh, not running the court, just kind of jogging down the floor and not being just now. He sprints down the court. He studies more film in the pick and roll. He knows how important that is now on this level. Whatever we need him to do, he does it at a high level. And uh, just that's the maturation phase of where he's come from because to where he is now because he wasn't doing that early on. Let me just double check real quick, make sure we don't have any questions from our Zoom audience. If you have a question, raise your hand. Nobody's raising their hand. Go ahead. Mark Giannato from the Commercial Pill again. Landers and Tyler didn't shoot the ball particularly well in Fort Worth. Did you see anything there? Were they getting the type of looks they were getting when they were shooting well and it just didn't go in? Is there anything needs to be adjusted. What did you make of their shooting struggles in Fort Worth? Yeah, I think it's just what it was, shooting struggles. And, you know, they got the shots that they wanted. They just didn't knock them down. Those are the same shots that they've knocked down in the past. Obviously, you know that. And we do believe in their shooting. You know, we're going to try to continue to get those guys shots. And, uh, you know, I like my chances when they get looks at the basket. Jay, T Jay Tusk, KTVB again. Um, Penny, when it comes to Boy State's uh, rebounding tenacity, if you will, how would you describe it, uh, and, and maybe in particular their effectiveness on the offensive boards at times? Yeah, I would just say fierce. You know, the big fella, he gets in there and starts wedging people, and then the other guys just crash in there. You know, we're used to that because we played against the Houston, and that's what they do. It's almost like they're mimicking that, which isn't a bad thing because they, they believe in crashing the glass, and they're reckless. They're just going to go in there and throw their bodies, you know, all over the place to try to get – action on the ball, and uh, that's something that you have to do to be successful on this level. you got to rebound the basketball on both ends. This will be our last question. Jason Munn's Commercial Appeal. Uh, have you had any, maybe this will come later, but uh, any flashbacks to your previous experiences in the NCAA tournament? Uh, I mean, I know it was when you were a player and all that, but, like, are you having any, you know, are, are any memories coming back to you about your time uh, your experiences in the NCAA tournament? Yeah, I mean, we came out my first year and did some things that a lot of people didn't think that we could do by beating those three teams that I mentioned earlier. And then the, the next year, we came in as a higher seed and we lost to Western Kentucky. You know, we just didn't, we didn't take, the, take that round as serious. So my experiences of going in as a sophomore and not expecting anything and just going to play hard, got us to the Elite Eight. Coming in the following year, expecting to win and beating the teams got us a loss. So you can't be too high, you can't be too low. You have to be even keel in this thing. And my experience has taught me that. All right, a reminder, the recording of this press conference and the last press conference will be available in the, in the NCAA Digital Media Hub at www.ncaa.verit1.com. And transcripts are going to be provided by ASAP and will be posted shortly. Coach Hardaway, thank you very much. Good luck tomorrow. Uh, our you. next press conference will be with the student athletes from Georgia State, and that will start at 11.05.
Up on the dais now is Georgia State head coach Rob Lanier. Coach, congratulations on making the tournament. Welcome to Portland. Uh, we'll go ahead and open with any kind of opening statement you'd like to make, and then we'll open it up for media questions. Well, I would say that um, obviously we're excited to be here and to be a part of the tournament. And I'm extremely proud of our group. Uh, it took a lot of uh, resilience and perseverance to get to this point. And we obviously play a formidable foal. Um, to win the tournament, we had to play the best we had played to that point, but we haven't played our best basketball yet. And quite obviously, we're going to need to approach that level to give ourselves an opportunity tomorrow. And we're excited about that challenge. All right, we'll open up to the room for questions. So, OK, we do have one in front. Brent Green, Crown uh, Coach Fitzgerald, obviously, you, you knew you were making the tournament. What was kind of your initial reaction when you saw the number one overall seed pop up on the other side of the bracket? Well, um, I was hoping to kind of sit there and have some anticipation for when our name got called. And then they called it right away. <laughs> um, so I was a little bit caught off guard, to be honest with you. Um, but, you know, I, I didn't have any expectations going into it. Um, I, was, I was really, truly open-minded about the possibilities. Uh, I wasn't locked into our, what seed we're going to be or whatever. Although I do believe that we represent a tremendous league in the Sun Belt. Um, and I think our league is better than people realize. And it's only going to improve because we've, you know, added some schools coming into the league. But quite honestly, I didn't have any expectations. Um, I knew we were going to play someone good, and that certainly did come true. So again, we're excited about the challenge. Rob, how does it help having a bunch of seniors like you have? How does that help you get ready to play Gonzaga? Yeah, I, I think it helps us tremendously. Um, you know, when you're playing a great opponent like this, and you have to withstand some runs, and you're going to play a team that when you do things well defensively, their ball might still go in the basket. Uh, and when you do things the way you practice offensively, you might not get what you want out of it. And you've got to be, be able to play through those moments during the course of a game. And so there's a level of poise and experience required to do that. And I think we have that with this group. Coach, we asked the same question of your players in that there's probably a lot of big time basketball fans who don't know who Georgia State is, but obviously they're a special group that has played well enough to win a championship and get to this point. Can you talk about what makes this particular team so special? Well, I, I would say, you know, last year we got to the championship game with this group and we had five starters returning who all averaged double digits for a team that was top 20 in the country in scoring. My concern in the offseason with the preseason number one ranking that we had coming into our league is whether or not we would be able to handle that. And I thought that would be our biggest challenge. And as we were trying to address that challenge, we had some injuries and we had some COVID disruptions that put us in a unique place in terms of becoming the team that, I, that we had hoped to be. And then when we finally got healthy, um, it wasn't until mid-January that we had everybody on the roster available to us. And from there, we started to become a team. Um, and I think right now, we're just still playing catch up to the team that we had expected to be in November and December, in January. So I think our best basketball, again, is still in front of us. And we're going to need to tap into that tomorrow. Are there any questions from our uh, Zoom audience? If there is, please uh, raise your hand. And we'll unmute you. OK, not seeing any other questions from the room. And name and affiliation, please. Stan Autry, Atlanta Journal-Constitution. Uh, Rob Corey Allen scored 29 in the semis and the finals at the conference tournament. I think you've been, you were waiting for that to 
kind of happen waiting for the lid to come off, as you said. Did you see that coming, and what did that mean for the team, and what does that mean going forward for his confidence? Well, I, I saw it coming for our team. Um, not, ne not necessarily just for Corey. You know, I think some of our shooting percentages are a little bit skewed because, you know, the data proves that we've got guys that can put the ball in the basket, and for whatever reason, our better players were taking the shots that they had made in the past and the ball wasn't going in the basket this year. So whether it was Corey or Kane or Justin or Jalen, um, we expected the ball to go in the basket at some point, even though Mike Holmes doubted me on that. Where's Mike? Is Mike in the room here? Um, and, and I kept saying that the lid is going to come off. And so I wasn't surprised that Corey did it. Uh, I was actually more proud that Corey had, uh, I think, eight rebounds and eight assists in that game, something like that. And, and, and I thought that we had established going into the tournament that we could win games without being as attractive on offense as we had become accustomed to. And that if we put the two together, we would become more formidable. That happened in the tournament. And again, we're going to need more of the same. Any other questions? Uh, seeing none, Coach, thank you for being here. Congratulations again on making the tournament, and best of luck tomorrow. Thanks, guys. Reminder that we will have a recording of this press conference available in NCAA Digital Media Hub at www.ncaa.verit1.com. Transcripts are provided by ASAP and will be posted shortly. Uh, our next press conference will be the student athlete availability with Boise State, and that will begin at 11.50.
lights are bright. All right, a couple, a couple of reminders. Here's the... Check, check. All right, there we go. A couple of reminders as we get started with our next press conference. Reminder to please say your name and affiliation before you uh, ask your question. And when you can, please direct your question to one of the two student athletes on the dais. And then a reminder that there is no video recording within the press conference room itself. If you'd like to uh, use video of the press conference, we encourage you to plug into one of the units in the electronic media room, or you can download the press conference from the NCAA Media Hub uh, once we are done. So once again, good morning. Welcome to the NCAA Division I Men's Basketball Tournament, first and second round games in Portland, Oregon. This is the practice day press conference for the Boise State. And joining us on the dais are student athletes Emmanuel Eckhart and Abu Kijab. Gentlemen, uh, congratulations. Welcome to Portland. And at this time, we will open up the questions. We'll start right here. Uh, BJ Rand with Proclamation News. For both of you guys, you've made so much history this year. You've already set a ton of records. But that final thing is winning that first tournament game in program history. What would it mean to you guys to get it done tomorrow? It means everything to us. We work for this. Um, we have confidence in ourselves, and you, you know we made history. But there's there's still more we want to accomplish. So we're just going there, taking it, you know, uh, moment by moment, and you know we're excited for tomorrow. Like he said, man, we're gonna take it day by day, moment by moment, and uh, we're gonna fall back on our habits, and everything's gonna take care of itself. Abu, John Mallory, KTIK Radio in Boise. Um, I know you watch a ton of tape. In a short period of time, how much have you been able to cram in on Memphis, and what are your initial thoughts? Uh, we've been watching them for a little while now, um, a couple days, and um, they're a really talented team. They're a really talented team, very athletic, uh, play a different style of basketball, and um, you know you got to come to play against Memphis. Uh, they're like I said, they're a really talented team, very long, and you know they can beat anybody in the country. So you really got to come ready to play. E-Man, um, and Abu, you can answer if you want here. You guys both transferred from big schools, Arizona and Oregon. Those schools usually more prone to face a team that looks as physically gifted as Memphis does. Do you think that helped you early on in your career and you can pass some of that knowledge to some of your current teammates who maybe haven't faced a team as big or as physical as what you're going to see tomorrow, E-Man? Um, definitely. I think, you know, we have a really experienced experienced group and there's you know, there's not much like a lot of us haven't seen in college basketball so I think just understanding that you know we could we could be any team in the country but you know we they're a very good team too so we just have to come ready to play um, when I was a freshman at Arizona we played Buffalo and we got destroyed and that just kind of taught me that you know when you come in an NCAA tournament you know all these teams are good so you gotta you know bring your best effort George, George K with the uh, Idaho Press uh, for both of you guys like the cliche around this time is experience wins in March, but for both of you guys, like, what's the difference in playing, you know, for one year together and now in a couple years? Like, how much have you grown? And like, what do you see as like the biggest advantage of that? Uh, we know each other's game very well. Uh, we know what we do well. We know what we're not good at, and we stick to our strength. We stick to our strength. Um, that's pretty much it, to be honest. You know, the game is very simple if you let it be. So we just try to go out there, make the simple right plays, and you know, over the course of a 40-minute game, you have something special at the end. Like Abu said, you know, we understand each other's strengths. We have really good chemistry, and you know, all our games are really different, but I think it complements each other really well. So I think you know, just having that you know understanding of how to play with each other is going to really help us this tournament. Gary. Kerry Eggers, KerryEggers.com. Abu, you, you started your career at, at Oregon for two years and, and transferred. How, what's the difference in the two programs that you've noticed, and how has the change been good for you? Um, Boise State's just been unbelievable for me. Um, I love the family atmosphere that I experienced right away. Coach Rice did a tremendous job of, you know, really helping me fit in. Um, and it's just been an unbelievable experience for me at Boise State. I'm very grateful and thankful for everyone that helped me throughout the journey. And um, it's just been an amazing experience. You know, I, I could sit here all day and talk about it, but um, you know, I really got to give a shout out to my Boise guys. They really helped me out. Jay. Jay Thomas, KTV. Uh, Abu, if you wouldn't mind knowing, uh, why is Emmanuel such a good leader? How will this quality help you on the court tomorrow? And then Emmanuel, if you could answer the same question. 
Emmanuel's unbelievable, man. He's unbelievable. He's our point guard. He's extremely vocal. Um, he's our rock. He holds us together. Um, even in those games that he wasn't playing this year, you can hear him on the sideline. And just his voice and presence makes a huge difference. Um, he has so many great qualities. And the stuff he does on the court is it, it's just, you know, the numbers don't say enough about what he does. You know what I mean? The passes he makes, those skip passes off the pick and rolls, those dimes he throws out of the post, um, his ability to create his own shot from three, two, and at the rim. So he does so much for us, and he's going to continue to do that. And I can't wait to play with him tomorrow. It's going to be great. Appreciate you. And for Abu, he's just, he embodies what Boise State's about. He's a great teammate, great leader. Um, he's always so vocal. He has a really great understanding of the game. And he you know, lets us know, um, you know things we could do better on the court. Um, he holds us accountable, and then on top of that, he's an ultra competitor and a, a really, really, really good player. And I think, you know, sometimes it goes, you know, understated. I mean, he was a second round or second um, team player in the Mountain West, and I think we all know he was a first teamer. So he's just a, a really good player and a really good teammate and embodies what Boise State's about. Bob Beeler, Bronco Radio Network. Uh, for both of you guys, you were with the team last year. Boo, I know you didn't play in the game against Memphis. Both teams are in the NCAA this year. You guys were both in the NIT. So where do you guys think you're better than last year? And then from looking at film, where do you think they're better? Um, it starts with our defense and rebounding. Uh, it's been a big emphasis all year. And I think we did a pretty good job of continuing to bring that every single day. And um, Memphis is a really talented team. I feel like they got better since last year, adding new guys to the squad and you know, just having a whole nother year together. And um, they're a really tough matchup, really tough matchup. But, you know, that's what it's all about. I love to compete. My teammates love to compete. And I want our first game to be a tough one. You know, I'm glad it is. It's a blessing in disguise, and I can't wait to play. Yeah, um, our team definitely, like Abu said, I think defense and rebounding, we took a huge leap. And I think just, you know, having, you know, our roles more carved out, really understanding, you know, uh, the game plan. And then for Memphis, I mean, they have a, a lottery pick in Jalen Duran, who's, you know, a lot to handle on the glass. So adding him is, you know, huge. And then, you know, they have a lot of, you know, big athletic wings who got a lot better. So it's going to be definitely a battle. Will Hall, KTBB. Abu, I know you're a film junkie. What stands out to you about Jalen Um, He can actually pass very well. So, if, you know, if you're doing a pick and roll and he gets out on that short roll, he's very capable of throwing those lobs up to his guys down below or hitting the guys in the corner when they help or, you know, going in there dunking or hitting a little floater. So he's a very talented player and he's also an extremely good defender, one of the best shot blockers in the country. So he's a really good player. You've got to be locked in on him. And I love the challenge. My guys are going to embrace the challenge and that's what basketball is about. So. JTUS, KTBB. Abu, uh, talking with Penny Hardaway earlier today, he says that he really respects your game, and he said that you're a force to be wrecking with, reckoned with. What does it mean to uh, hear a guy like Penny Hardaway, who obviously has his place reserved in basketball history, uh, say that about you, where he respects your game? Um, it feels good, but obviously I can't get too caught up in it. We still got a game to play tomorrow. And um, Penny's a hell of a player, Hall of Famer, and just to hear that from him feels good. But like I said, you can't get caught up in all that. We still got to go tomorrow and play. DJ Reigns again with Bronco Nation News. What, you know, first tournament appearance for most of the rest of your guys here and, and for this program going seven years. I know you guys haven't been out there for the practice and stuff yet, but what do you, how confident are you guys that this, I mean, why, why is this moment not going to be too big for this team? Why, why is a veteran team like this ready for a moment? Um, I think the only difference between this tournament and all the other games we played is there's millions of people inter interested instead of, you know, just a couple thousand or hundreds. So I think it's the same process, just a basketball game at the end of the day. So, you know, we're just going to look at it like that and, you know, come out to compete. Like he said, we're going to approach it with the same mentality we approach every game, whether there's 10,000 people in the stand or 100 in the stand, it doesn't matter. So. We have one question from the Zoom room. We'll take that, then we'll come back to the room. So uh, Taylor Allen, you should be able to unmute. Go ahead. Can we bring your audio up? Taylor, go ahead with your question.
we're, we're not able to hear the question here, so we're gonna, we'll, we'll, we'll get the uh, technical difficulties worked out. Uh, we'll go right here in front, Jim. Jim Meehan, Spokesman Review. Uh, Andrew Nemhard mentioned he's played with you, against you, kind of growing up. Uh, can you talk about uh, the possibility of running into him and uh, uh, Saturday if it happens and just growth in Canadian basketball overall the last decade or so? Yeah, I played with Andrew on Team Canada. Uh, we're really good friends, so, you know, you know, we beat Memphis, you know, that second round matchup against Gonzaga. If they won, you know, that's definitely going to be something we'll talk about forever. But uh, the growth of Canada basketball has been huge. Um, you know, dudes every day, I mean, the, the, we have the number one player coming out with Shaden Sharp. I mean, it's just growing, and it's just beautiful to see, you know, when we were growing up in Canada, it wasn't nearly as good as it is now. So it's just spectacular to see the growth in Canadian basketball. Uh, how does having a regimented schedule help you guys to kind of take that same mentality of one game at a time? Uh, sorry, can you repeat the question? I can yeah, no problem. Uh, how does having a regimented schedule help you guys to keep that same mentality of taking it one game at a time? Uh, I think it's just, you know, nice. Um, the NCAA tournaments, you know, it's, it's a once-in-a-lifetime thing almost. It's, it's a spectacular moment. And just like, being on a, on a schedule and, you know, having an open practice and interviews is just – just enjoying the process of you know being in the NSA tournament and our team's gonna enjoy it and you know take it moment by moment. Abu, John Mallory, KTIK Boise. When you watch Memphis, when they lose, when they don't play well, what typically happens? What would you is it the same problems or what would those problems be when they lose? Um, they give up a lot of open threes. Uh, the way they play, um, they want you to go to the rim and try to put something up and they have amazing shot blockers, so they're coming in and s smacking that off the glass. So um, when they get beat, they usually give up open threes, and, um, and if anyone gives up open threes, that's going to beat you. We have time for two more questions. Jason, that's KTV. Um, you made multiple threes this year. What's this year the uh, unbeatable? So what is the value and the confidence you we see that first one go through? And in terms of your health, uh, Leon said maybe you're in the Mountain tournament. Um, can you repeat the first question? Yeah, Sorry. Oh, definitely. Um, you know, I worked on my game a lot. Um, it doesn't matter if the first three misses, the second three misses. I'm shooting every shot like it's going to go in. So I think just the work is has given me confidence in my three point shot. And then can you repeat your second question? Yeah, just your health. You feel like you're back. Um, my health, yeah, definitely um, endurance, getting a lot better. Um, last game, I sprained my ankle, so that's a little that's a little rough to work with. But tomorrow, you know, I'll have the adrenaline. It's also my birthday tomorrow, so nothing to stop me from playing. Last question. You, you guys both obviously started at other places, but to, you chose to come to Boise State for a reason. I mean, did you guys see this as being possible, this team getting to the tournament, obviously? And what does it mean to bring this moment uh, here as seniors to, to this program? Uh, this is what we've been working for the whole year. You know, to get to these moments and um, we're going to embrace these moments and take them one day at a time and it's just all a part of the process it's all a part of the process um, you know when you stop worrying about outcomes that you can't control and just focus on the things you can't control you know you can do a lot of special things yeah um, you know you have to believe it first to accomplish it and I think you know every single person you know part of our program believed that you know we were going to be an state tournament team and Mountain West champions and uh, we're just going to bring that to the tournament all right, that's our time. Emmanuel Acott, Abu Kijab, thank you for being here. Best of luck tomorrow. Thank, thank you for having us. We'll have head coach Leon, Leon Rice on the dais here momentarily. All right, with us now on the dais is Boise State head coach Leon Rice. Uh, coach Rice, congratulations on the return to the tournament. And we'll start with an opening statement from you, and then we'll open it up to questions. Well, we're, we're you know, 
we're excited to be here at the NCAA tournament and here in Portland. Uh, you know, it's great to be in the Northwest and hopefully we have a great turnout of Boise State fans and, uh, uh, you know, our guys couldn't be more excited to play and, and get after it tomorrow. Lindsay. USA Today. Hi, Leon. Uh, there's a few, turn a few families in the NCAA tournament, obviously you and Max, but then there's also like Will Graves is playing at GU and while his dad coaches at Oregon. It's unique to Joe have... Few. Joe Few is it. Yeah. Yeah. Don't forget Joe Few. <clears throat> there's, there's a lot of them. Um, it's unique to have a parent who really understands what a kid that is going through in college sports and vice versa. Can you just speak to how special and unique it is that you get to coach your son and that you get to see his friends and their parents also succeed? Yeah, it it is. It's really, really special. And, um, you know, the, the funny thing for me is we're going about and we're all doing our jobs and he's doing his job, and Max, and I'm doing my job. And um, sometimes I look out there and I went, oh, yeah, Max is on the team, my son. <laughs> That's... But, you know, when, when I went through the decision-making process he and I did together, uh, I reached out to tons of coaches that had had the opportunity to coach their son, not just basketball coaches, football coaches, Dan Hawkins. Uh, I reached out to Alford, McDermott, guys like that. And they would all start with how difficult it can be and the, the stuff you have to go through and the challenges that you face. But they, they all ended it with, you got to do it. It's the greatest experience. And, and you know, they're right. There's, there's been challenges. There's been hard parts for both him and me. And, um, but in the end, it's been, been so rewarding. And then, you know, what Max brings to this team has been amazingly valuable. And he does whatever the, the game needs or whatever the team needs. And ACOT was out, so Max went in and started and scored 17 in one game and 13 in another. Well, then... E-Man comes back and Max says, all right, I'm a ball mover. I'm a shooter. I'm a, you know, uh, you need rebounds tonight. I'll go get nine of them. And so his role on this team has been so important. Um, you know, to see those other guys, it, I mean, we have a, uh, the spokesman did a great, and I apologize for not knowing who wrote that story, the name off the top of my head, but it was a terrific story uh, about them all growing up together and what they got to experience and, and, you know, being along for the ride from being a little kid to now they're playing in these games and, and being a part of it all from the other side. And, and, you know, a bunch of them want to go into coaching. And <laughs> I thought the best line in that uh, 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 article was that I said, well, of course they want to go into coaching. There's nothing else those guys can do. They, and I think <laughs> I even called them a word that I probably didn't. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, they've just been around it their whole lives. That's all they know, and they know the coaching stuff. They know the playing stuff, and they're kind of, you know, and it shows up in the way most of those coaches' kids play is, is they're a little bit wise beyond their years on the court. Uh, BJ Rangers, Bronco Nation News. Coach, you've obviously made a lot of history this year, the wins record, the championships, everything else, but how badly does this program want to win the, the first game in tournament history? It, our job's the same. You know, that, that that's – we've never – um, how badly we want to win the conference championship, how badly we want to win the tournament, how badly we want to... It's, it's all the same as far as that's the magic of what these guys and the way these guys have approached it. They, they've wanted to win every game the same way, and they competed that, that same way. Our mission's the same. Our job is the same. It's business as usual with these guys, and, you know, the, the way they've approached their business all year long has been just tremendous how, how they compete and how they fight every night and um so in that aspect you, you don't want to make i mean we don't we don't expect a bob beeman effort we don't want a bob beeman effort we need to do our jobs now we got to play really really good and they know that but that's no different than the you know to win the mountain west championship game or, or any of those so our job is the same and, and for us we approach it as business as usual Coach, Austin White with the Portland Tribune. You know, obviously Abu came over from Oregon. You know, what was it about his game that you wanted at Boise State, and has he kind of met or exceeded those expectations that you had for him? Well, that's almost a rhetorical question with how he's, how good he's been and how he's, uh, you know, the interesting thing about Abu was the very, very first thing, uh, 
I'll let that go by for a second. <laughs> the, the very, very first thing you hear about Abu when you reach back into his past and talk to people that have, that have been around him and that have coached him. I mean, he was on that Canadian team that was the first Canadian team to ever beat a, a team from the U.S. In, in international competitions. And he was a huge part. I mean, they had NBA guys on that team. And he was probably the, you know, the thing that I was told was he was the, the competitor that brought that whole thing together. And, uh, and that's what you found. He's a winner. He's a high-character kid that, that cares about his teammates and cares about the right stuff. And um, he certainly lived up to that. And, and that's, you know, he's our most vocal leader. We've got a lot of leaders in a lot of different ways. But he's the one that brings energy to the room and the excitement to these guys and, and you know, the confidence that they have. Jordan Tate with the Idaho Press. We, we saw how good E-Man was in the Mountain West tournament. Um, first off, just how big of an advantage is it when you have a, a six foot eight point guard? And secondly, I, you've been running a positionless team for a while. The NBA is kind of going that way. I mean, are we done trying to like stereotype guys position based on their height? Yeah, I think that's that has evolved a lot, especially in the last five years. But we were doing that out of necessity. You know, when you look back to Nick Duncan and James Webb, is that, you know, nobody could decipher which one was the five, which one was the four, which, you know, when Derek Marks was the one, two, three, five, who knew? And uh, so we kind of went to that a while ago and just tried to get them to play to their strengths. And you know, that's what we've done with this team is just because Shaver's the smallest doesn't mean his strengths might be different. You know, sometimes it's the two, sometimes it's one. And, and we just try to let these guys and, and have our system play to what they do really, really well. And, you know, one of the things I saw with E-Man is he does gain some advantages with his size throughout the year of, you know, some of those late shot clock shots. I don't know if you had a smaller guard, if they even get those off that he's been able to make for us. Some of those challenges in the change of game you know uh, he challenges that last shot and he's six eight that makes a difference than you know a six footer challenge in that shot so there is an advantage to having those guys that, that are long and athletic and and uh, you know that's I think that's where his versatility helps us so much Leon Brian Hamilton from the athletic Jalen Duran doesn't look like a freshman physically <laughs> are, are there ways that he plays though at this point that aren't freshman like either i don't think they're freshmen at this time of year that's what we've always said when a guy's getting a lot of minutes and the guy's getting a lot of experience they're no they're no longer freshmen when it comes to march and you know even february is they've, they've had you know the the, the freshman year's kind of gone they know the system and you look at the way he's playing i mean his last month has been amazing he he certainly doesn't physically look like a freshman but now his game you know, doesn't resemble anything close to any freshman, you know, at this time of year. Hey, Doug, Casey V. Leon, I know that Derek Marks and obviously you guys are different players, but when you look, if you peel back the curtains and look at the, their competitive drive and, and those types of things are intangible, do you, do you mirror any, any similarities between the two? Yeah, yeah, and the other one I throw into that is from my days at Gonzaga, Jeremy Pargo, you know, is – you could be, I always tell the stories about Jeremy, you could be having the roughest, toughest days, you could have lost a game, you could have been down in the dumps, no matter who you are, whether you're a player or a coach, and you'd show up to the uh, gym and you're like, oh, good, I get to hang out with Jeremy today. And Abu's the same way. He he doesn't, you know, he just he's just got a great positive attitude and, um, you know, it's just infectious to the rest of the team. And uh, I just love being around guys like that. And and I think he and I pour into each other that way uh, in a lot of ways. And, and I think we affect each other that way in a lot of ways. And um, so, the, you know, the, he'll be a, a special one that I'll talk about. You know, I'm talking about Jeremy. That was, what, 15 years ago. And I know Jeremy's old now. But, uh, it's, uh, you know, I'll be talking about Abu that way for the next 15, 20 years. Mike Prater, KTIK Radio. Leon, as you continue to build this program, what would the first win in NCAA history mean to this program? How could you capitalize on that and continue to build this program? Like I said, I don't, I mean, yeah, it's one of those things that, you know, in a month or in two weeks or in three weeks, you, you talk about, no, oh, that was great. And it's another thing you can put up on your walls and all that stuff. Um, but right now, 
that's not at all our focus. I mean, like, you know, it's awesome. And this is the greatest, like you've heard me say it a lot, this is the greatest sporting event in the world. And, and we get to be part of it. And, and uh, uh, yeah, a win means everything. But that's really not our focus is our mission and our jobs. And, and that's our focus. Now, in a month or in weeks or whatever, we'll look back on it and go, that was, I mean, those are neat accomplishments. And we always love those miles. As I've said it since I got to Boise, milestones are great. I mean, we don't dwell on them, but they're great because that means you're accomplishing things. And, and you know, that's, that's what this group has been able to do, no doubt. We're going to try the Zoom room again real quick, uh, see if this works. Taylor Allen, uh, try talking to us. Go ahead. Thanks. Can you hear me okay? We can hear you. Yeah, awesome. Taylor Allen from the Winnipeg Free Press. Coach, I'm sure you spoke to this uh, many times this season, but, but what has Emmanuel Acott meant to, to this team, and how has he helped you guys have a record-breaking season? Well, he's another one that, uh, you know, he has great confidence, and, um, you know, he's, a, he's been a great team guy. Uh, and then his versatility has meant so much to this team, and, you know, you can put him on – you can guard one through five. And last year he played – probably was one of the only – players in the country that actually played one through five. So his versatility gives us a, such a freedom to use all the other guys in different ways that, that let them play to their strengths. And, um, but yeah, he, he's, uh, I think that's maybe the biggest thing is his versatility has meant so much to us. Coach, uh, Dave LaRoche Memphis Radio. You guys played each other in the NIT last year. Are both teams better? And how are both teams different? It sure, it sure looks like it. I mean, you know, um, I think the team we played last year was really good, uh, no doubt about it. Um, the, what was the second part of that question? I'm sorry. How is it different? Oh, different. Well, just, you know, the styles are, are contrasting a lot. They're going to press you, the, you know, a ton, and they're going to trap you more than what we do. And I think we have some common ground the way we rebound the ball. Um, I think both teams are pretty strong, pretty athletic, uh, pretty aggressive. Th those are the similarities. But the you know the offensive styles are a little different. But mostly the defense and how their defense creates so many highlight plays and so many transition points. That's probably the biggest difference in, in the two. Leon John Mallory, KTIK Radio in Boise. You know I'm watching Memphis practice. You know 81 years old, Larry Brown out there grinding with the post players, Penny obviously too. What stands out when you watch these guys about how they are coached? Well, we got 81-year-old Mike Burns and Tim Durie, so uh, I think that's a push, right? We got two of them to add up to one, right? Uh, in, I mean, they're, you know, they do the the, they do a great job with what they have and, and fits their talent, and they play to those guys. And I think our team and our coaching staff has done a magnificent job of figuring out what our strengths were, because really, that's that, I, to me, that's great coaching is that is those teams that can figure out what what they have to do with the guys they have, because there's no trades in the middle of the season. There's no you know things like that. They you got to figure out what you have and try to put them in the best position that gives them the best chance to win. And, you know, they have they went through what I call a valley of death, just like we did. Ours was right at the start, and then we went on the huge winning streaks. They went through their own valley of death and came out of it on the other side. And, and you know, you saw what they've been doing the last month, month and a half, or however long it's been. These are our last two questions. Coach Joe McHale with KHQ in Spokane, right here, Coach. Here you are, Joe. Um, just what did you see uh, in Tyson Dagenhart when you were going through the recruiting process and along his development this season? Has anything he's done really su surprised you? Well, first of all, I saw the greatest hairdo for a guy like him uh, when he was a senior and the, with the braids. I, didn't, I was disappointed he cut those off. I always liked those. But he said that was his high school version. But, you know, I, I, my son played with Tyson and Coach Few, Joe Few played with him and um, – uh, boy, this turned into a Joe Few press conference. He'll be so happy to hear that. So, uh, uh, it. But we saw, first of all, high character. I mean, he and he's such a winner. Uh, you know, we saw that from the time he was in like eighth or ninth grade, and um, uh, so that that was the that was the number one thing. Because guys like him that have the body and and have 
the work ethic, that character, that work ethic, all that, that team guy stuff, that all translates and those guys become great. And that, that was the thing that, that I mostly wanted in this, in this program. I mean, he's a special, special kid and he makes others better. He's got a great empathy for his teammates. And that's why we were able to put him in the starting lineup with a bunch of seniors. And they, they had so much respect for him that, and the, he, they knew that he cared about winning and he cared about making his teammates better. And he was gonna work as hard or harder than anybody. And so there was a respect there. And that, that, that's why it was so successful to make the change and put him in the starting lineup. Rachel, you have the last question. Rachel Roberts with the Idaho Statesman. Uh, you've talked a lot this season about staying in the moment with your team. What is the regimented schedule that you have now helping with, how is the regimented schedule helping with their nerves? It's not so much the schedule, it's the mindset of how we approach it. And, the, you know, I mean, we, we, we still want, you know, we want to enjoy everything. We want to be here now and play with the joy that we've played with all year. And, and uh, you know, the togetherness, the, and the humility of it wasn't an individual, it wasn't, you know, our performance or let our ego sneak into some of this. Oh, we won the league, we did this. It was the humility to know it was the body of work that we were doing together on a daily basis that made us successful. And, and that was a big part of, of our staying in the moment and the humility to just, the, hey, here's the task at hand today. Here's what we got to accomplish today. And it doesn't mean we don't enjoy it. doesn't mean we don't, you know, love being around each other and, and, and find the fun and the joy in our daily activities. But we, we are here and now, and that's, that's what these guys, but we have to, you know, you have to address that. You have to practice it. You have to get your minds right to do that. Coach Rice, thank you for your time. Best right. of luck tomorrow. Thanks, everybody. A recording of this press conference will be available in the NCAA Digital Media Hub at www.ncaa.verit1.com. Transcripts are being provided by ASAP and will be posted shortly. Our next press conference will be with the student athletes from Gonzaga, and that will begin at 1235. Check, check. It makes no noise when I turn it on now.
Jack. All right, a couple of reminders before we get going. Uh, once again, when you ask your question, please say your name and affiliation, and if possible, please direct your uh, question to one of, one of our student athletes. And a reminder that no video is allowed in the interview room. If you wish to access a video of the press conference, you can plug into one of the units in the uh, electronic media area, or you can download later from the NCAA Media Hub. All right, this is the press practice day press conference for Gonzaga. And joining us on the dais are student athletes Julian Strother and Rajir Bolton. Gentlemen, thank you for being here. Congratulations on the return to the tournament. And at this time, we will open it up to questions. Lindsay, you may go first again. Thank you. Lindsay Schnell, USA Today. Um, I would love for both of you to detail for us, and they have to be different, your favorite highlight from Chet this season? Uh, <laughs> I, I go. Uh, my favorite, my favorite Chet highlight was probably uh, in Vegas against UCLA, uh, coast to coast, behind the back into the uh, into the dunk and transition. I mean, it was during a big run for us, and uh, it kind of just got everybody going. And I was like, I feel like that was the moment that a lot of people, uh, you know, fans alike, kind of, kind of said, whoa. And uh, you know this kid, this kid's special, and I feel like we all had that same exact reaction. 
Uh, for mine, uh, I'm going to go with something you guys haven't seen. Uh, it was one day in practice. He had came down in transition, and uh, he had tried a 360 layup. So, um, you know, seeing him every day, you know, knowing what he's capable of, just seeing a seven-footer try and come down and do something that athletic or agile was very impressive to me. So that's probably my favorite moment. Austin White, Portland Tribune, uh, for Razier. Uh, what's the difference, you know, if there is one, in the mentality of this team this year compared to last year coming into this tournament? Uh, as far as the team, um, I mean, I would just say, you know, it's a different team. Uh, you know, being in Gonzaga, you know, they have, you know, it's a different culture here. Uh, you know, winning culture, you know, something, you know, they've been doing. Not to say Iowa State doesn't have that, of course, but, you know, um, I just think it's just a different team. And, you know, the, the cards fell where they fell this year, and, you know, it played out well for us. Going hey, back first. Keith, Keith Oso, KXOY for both of you. You've only played two games in the last, what, three weeks. How excited are you just to get here and get going for something you've probably waited for for 365 days? Uh, I feel like I feel like we've all been aging and real, real, real hungry to play. I mean, these are these are the games you dream to play in. You know, March Madness, the biggest stage in, in the college basketball. So you know, we're all just ready. I mean, we've been going at each other for a while now in practice, and we're ready to just go out there and play against somebody else and a different opponent. Uh, for me, this is my first time in the tournament, so you know, I'm definitely excited to get out there and play for sure. Uh, Travis, Travis Green from Crim Two. Uh, news in Spokane. I get this question for both of you guys. Uh, you know that you've been, you were going to be in March Madness for a while now. What's it like now that it, it's finally here? Uh, I feel like it's, it's definitely getting more real. You know, as a, you know, we get closer and closer to game time, and you know, we're here in the arena now. I mean, it's just, it's just so exciting. I mean, it's such a, such a big moment for all of us. And you know, we, our whole season has been going towards this goal of uh, coming here and winning the national championship. So to finally be here and have the opportunity to get that started, I mean. It's really cool. Uh, Brenna Green, Crem2 News. Uh, for both of you, obviously, when we talked to you last, you didn't know anything about Georgia State. What do you know about them now? Um, you know, they're aggressive. Uh, you know, very handsy team. Pick up full court. Uh, like to play in the gaps. Uh, you know, they play through their guards. You know, like to get some threes up. You know, they're two bigs. They're tough guys. You know, they rebound, defend, all that. So, you know, they're a tough team. And, uh, you know, they're definitely going to come to play. So we got to be ready tomorrow. Yeah, he, got, he covered it. Uh, he got it. Uh, Julian, I'm glad seen that Tommy Lloyd played a role in recruiting you. Yeah. So I wondered this year with him in Arizona, do you follow their success? Do you pay attention to what he's done? He's obviously having a great season. And is it weird still that he's not in Spokane? Uh, I mean, I mean, it's definitely weird, but I'm always wishing him the best, and I'm really happy for him and all the success that he's having over there in Arizona. So, I mean, it's really cool to see him, you know, smiling, having a good time, and, uh, you know, the other guys, TJ Benson, Ken Nakagawa, that were also on staff. I mean, those are my guys, too. So I'm really just happy for them all, and I always wish them all the best. Other questions out there? Any questions from the Zoom room? If you do have a question, raise your hand. I mean, if no one else is going to ask questions. Um, Razir, when you said that, you know, when Chet did that 360, uh, did he make the 360 layup or just attempted it in practice? I'm going to say he made it. OK. <laughs> For you guys, like, when he first showed up, when he first started playing open gyms, like, did you know much about him? Or were you also blown away by what he could do? Um, I mean, you know, I knew, of course, from, you know, the, the highlight clips and the YouTube videos and stuff like that. But uh, seeing a talent like that in person is definitely different. Uh, just to see how little things he does, you know, how easily he blocks shots and starts to break, or how he outlet passes or rebounds or, you know, really little things, you know, catch and shoot three. So, you know, seeing it in person was definitely a different experience. Yeah, I mean, I had, I had a couple experiences with him prior to uh, coming to Gonzaga, but um, just being able to play with, with him and on, on the same team as him. I mean, there's so many things that he does that impact the game that not too many. I'm actually going to say no one in the country can do, you know, the things he does to impact and help our team. So, I mean, to have that, I mean, I feel like it's the biggest boost you could have. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, very disruptive. I mean, you can't really go in the paint and, uh, you know, put up shots that you normally put up. I mean. It's pretty annoying to have somebody just come over and uh, beat yourself off the glass when you thought you had an open layup. So, I mean, it's, it's real disruptive. Any other questions for our student athletes? 
Razir, obviously you came here for this specific reason. I guess is it pay, is, are you walking around today saying this is this is it? I mean, you, you only got six games left. Hopefully, um, what, what's this journey been like for you at Gonzaga, and now the reward of playing here? Um, you know, it's been fun. Uh, it's definitely the reason why I came here. You know, to to make a tournament run and try and win a national championship. Um, so you know, I'm excited to be here. Uh, I don't think you know I have a this is it feeling. It's kind of a more of like you know it's time now to you know play. You know, live out my dream. So you know, I'm ready for it. Rossier Tyson Alger with I-5 Corridor. What's it like playing for the number one team in Pacific daylight time? I mean, you're like you're used to playing your whole career on the East Coast. Like, are people staying up to watch you? Like, like how's that been for people to adjust to watching you so late? Uh, it's definitely been an adjustment for my family for sure. Um, but yeah, you know, they've been staying up later to catch some games, you know, or or they'll text me earlier in the day and tell me, you know, they might not catch the one tonight, but you know, they'll they'll check their stats in the morning and text me. So. You know, it's definitely been an adjustment, but I appreciate all the love and support from me for sure. Uh, maybe like a couple games, like, you know, being a kid, like staying up late and flipping through channels and, you know, their game might be on. So I'll stay up and watch it then. But, uh, you know, I knew about them, of course, you know, because of the winning, but I never really stayed up late and, you know, tuned in to Gonzaga. Any other questions? All right, Julian Strother, Rajir Bolden, thank you very much. Best of luck tomorrow. Uh, next media availability will be with uh, Gonzaga coach Mark Few, and that's scheduled to start at 12.50.
All right, thank you. Our next co press conference is with uh, Gonzaga head coach Mark View. Coach, uh, congratulations on the return to Portland. Uh, you can begin with an opening statement, and then we will open it to the room for questions. Uh, well, it's awesome to be back to another uh, NCAA tournament, especially one that uh, you know we'll have fans at. Uh, it'll be great to to walk out on the floor and 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 see the the real and feel the real March Madness environment. So I think all of us are are so excited and feel so blessed to be able to uh, to get back to that. Uh, you know, from our team and our program standpoint, it's great to be able to come to Portland. Uh, we've obviously had some great memories here. We've got a lot of myself being an Oregonian and 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 players from Oregon and then just some real, real uh, uh, wonderful connections down here. And, and uh, uh, But then you flip the script and, and you start watching tape and, and uh, you know, some real apprehensiveness with uh, a Georgia State squad kind of scratching my head and shocked that they're a 16 seed. I, didn't, I don't really see that. Uh, and so we know we're in for, uh, just like you are all the time in the NCAA tournament, it's going to be a really, really uh, – tough, hard-fought game, and we're going to have to play very good to, uh, to move on. Lindsay? Lindsay Schnell, USA Today. Hi, Mark. Uh, I asked your players this. What is your favorite Chet highlight from the season? It can be something that happened in practice that we haven't seen. Uh, you know, I mean, Chet does a lot of eye-popping things, and then he does some real head-scratching things. So, uh, <laughs> you know, I guess it depends on what kind of mood I'm in. Uh, uh, best thing about Chet, I'm telling you, is he's so coachable, and he's such a hard worker. Probably my greatest highlight is to walk out there the morning after a game, and he's already got a full sweat going that morning, you know, working on something, whether it's, his, you know, his basketball skills or in the weight room with Travis or or even watching film on the next opponent. He's, a, he's incredibly driven and, and he's got a plan. So uh, maybe something like that. It's kind of boring, but from a coach's standpoint, that's it's always great to see. Hey, Coach Austin White from the Portland Tribune. Right here. Uh, you know, you touched on your opening statement, some connections to Portland, uh, you know, with Matt, Ben, and uh, your assistant coach, Brian. Yep. You know, how special is it for those three to be here playing a March Madness game in Portland? And what have they kind of brought to the program, especially Coach Mickelson? Uh, hey, I think it's special to them, special to me. I mean, heck, I grew up two hours from here, and it was like always the biggest thing in the world to be able to come up to Portland maybe one or two days a year, you know, whether it's for a state tournament or something, and, and you're just in awe of the old Coliseum. And, and uh, <clears throat> so I think it... It's great. It's great for them to get back home around their families. It certainly makes for easy travel for our fans. Uh, and in regards to B. Mike, I mean, he, I, I think he is the true Zag because he's so very understated and so humble. And he's had just an enormous impact on our program, you know, as much as anybody has over the years. He's he's a unbelievable uh, relationship developer and. and uh, ferocious recruiter. I think that's just, I don't think people understand that, just how many uh, of the great players we've had have been probably, you know, at least influenced the most by B Mike in the recruiting process. And he's got a real, real analytical uh, feel uh, that has helped me over the years because I was not the greatest analytics guy at the start of this whole movement and still probably in the lower percentile. But uh, uh, he's, Great at game planning, great at scouting, and, 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 and excellent at player development. Orlando. Uh, Orlando Sanchez, KGW-TV, Portland. Uh, along the same lines that you mentioned at the top of this, being an Oregonian, being from here, and also having quite a few players that are from the Pacific Northwest on the roster, uh, can you describe being able to, one, be in front of fans, but two, knowing that there's a lot of family that's here, how more significant is that? Well, I think that's one of the best things and one of the best moves over the years. Uh, you know, I, I don't know what this is. Is this our 23rd or 25th or something straight year in a tournament, which is just such an awesome accomplishment by all our guys and something I'm probably most proud of, of everything we've been able to do, because it is just so hard to get to this 
tournament that I think is the greatest sporting event in, in the world. But the coolest thing, uh, greatest move I think the NCAA did was having, you know, if you're in that first four seeding group somewhere, you get to stay closer to home. And just makes it so much easier for friends, for families, for our fans. And it really, really, really rewards teams for just battling and slugging it out over the course of four and a half months uh, and giving them something other than just a number on a line. And uh, so certainly, you know, we knew early on this year when we looked at it way back in September that Portland was, uh, you know, one of the host cities. And I think that was a that was a goal for all of us to get here. Brenna Green, Crem2 News. Uh, you said you were scratching your head at Georgia State being yep. a 16 seed. Why? Because I've seen them on tape and watched them, and, and you know they're just they're also they come from a conference that ordinarily doesn't. Uh, uh, it's not a 16 seed conference. Uh, they're very experienced. I think they were picked to win their league at the start of the year and just had some COVID issues. And then if you really want to look at the analytics, and some analytics are almost 90 points higher than, than uh, uh, some of the other teams that were seeded 16 and us being the number one overall. It's just, again, I'm not sure. I think the committee did a great job breaking down the, the, all the top four seeds across the regions and, and, and even probably, you know, that's probably the most important aspect when you're in the the committee room that and then the you know last four in and first four out and i think they didn't did as good a job as they could do on that but it's just yeah that's a head scratcher this is not a 16 seed and we've played plenty of 16 seeds over the years lindsey uh mark you mentioned with b mike that he's had a huge influence on your program obviously there are a couple other coaches around here who have two including leon rice who you've probably passed in the yep. hallway and yep. tommy in arizona yep. how much are you able to talk to them during the season do you check in on their scores do you ever watch them just as a friend and a supporter yeah absolutely we talk pretty much every day or close to it um i have another uh, guy that's been huge with our program ray jacoletti who uh was at the university of st louis and and uh so yeah and then i actively watch their games as a fan and a friend uh whenever we can i mean we're certainly and the family's very much engaged in that. When I come home, sometimes they're all fired up because either Arizona or Boise State's on, or Long Beach State, or or Colorado, or you know all the all the friends in our uh, uh, that are very very close to us. And again, you know in Leon's case, they're like family, and Tommy's the same. Our families literally grew up together, and our kids have, were raised together. So uh, it's pretty special. This is a crazy profession, and it. Most cases, you're not allowed that, uh, you know, just that opportunity. And, and we've been so blessed to all be at Gonzaga. And, and, and uh, you know, the way we run our program is we let our kids run around on the side or just run wildly around the arena while we're practicing, which is fine by me. And, and uh, I think it's, it's, it's just been fun to see the kids grow up together like that. Dave Bowling, Spokesman Review. Uh, Coach, how, how, in what ways is this team different from the 22 or whatever that preceded it? Its personality, its style of play, anything that jumps out at you? Uh, I mean, I, look, every team's different. You know, I mean, I probably the, the, the least re reported or least talked about aspect of this team is just how much we lost from last year. We have three guys that are in the NBA off last year's team. Uh, and, and two of them were, you know, had been with us a long, long time, and Corey and Joel, and were great players, but they were also kind of the heart and soul of our program. And then, and then to lose such just a, you know, a flying comet of a player in person in, uh, in uh, Jalen, uh, that was a lot. And we had, we had a lot of new faces, and, and I think that, the great thing about this year's team is how easily they assimilated together and how they gave up different aspects of their game for the good of the team. And, and uh, you know, from Chet to, to Razier to even guys that 
you know, hadn't really done much a year ago. Julian Strother stepped in, Anton Watson stepped in to have, a, you know, just a great uh, uh, run this year. So I think that, to me, that's the big, the biggest story there. Tyson. In in regards to uh, T Tyson Alger, I five corridor hey. over here. Um, in regards to Matthew Lang, what's it like for you when you get to put a guy on scholarship that had been a walk on for you? And then also, what did he, what has he done throughout his career to be able to get to that point for you? Uh, Matt's been great. Matt Matt's another true zag who just gives you everything he's got in practice. He's he's a very very good player. I mean, he can easily play at you know other programs uh, throughout the country. He's really, really developed, um, you know, over his time with us to where, I mean, he's a handful in practice. He was torching us pretty good yesterday. So uh, um, that comes from a great program, Jesuit High. Um, I mean, we've had a lot of Jesuit guys over the years that have had huge effects on our program, from Brian Michelson to Kyle Wilcher to, you know, to now Matt. And, and uh, uh you know, comes from a great family, and it's it's uh, it's awesome to be able to reward a kid. Um, it's complicated in this day and age because the transfer portal is such an important aspect to fill in your roster. So you're always kind of waiting around to see what's going to happen there. Unfortunately, uh, you know, we had one that we weren't able to use, so we gladly and and uh, we're excited to give it to uh, Matt. Keith Oso, KXOY, coach, you guys have raised the bar so high that there's only really one thing left to achieve as far as this tournament goes. What's that balance like for this being the greatest tournament in the world? And, and there's people that, that you guys are the number one overall seed for the second year in a row. It doesn't seem like it's a big deal. What are they going to do in March? You know, what's that balance like to, to understand that, but to remind people, I guess, that the other 30 games matter too? Yeah, hey, Keith, I, I just think just to not buy into that narrative. I mean, I, I certainly don't. Um, and I do everything I can to, to make sure our players don't. Obviously, the people around us within the athletic department and, and you know, those of us that are close, none of us buy into that because we're out there battling and we understand all the people that didn't make it. I mean, I just look around the Pacific Northwest, I mean, and, or even out west, who, who, who was fortunate enough to, to make the tournament. Uh, you know, let alone get get a high seed. So uh, um, we feel blessed to be able to do that. The number one seed is is something we do cherish uh, because it just shows you know you're the best out of everybody for four and a half months. You you really really earned this. This this thing we start tomorrow is just a three week crapshoot, man. You got to be really good, but you got to be lucky too. Uh, and those are two different entities. Um, you know, we're at the point now where you're right. I mean, whether we haven't won it or whether we had won a championship, we want to win this thing as bad as anybody. Uh, but we're also, I feel, smart enough and balanced enough to really cherish uh, the accomplishment that we had, not only this year, but in years past. These will be our last two questions. Kerry? Uh, Kerry Eggers, uh, KerryEggers.com, Mark. Another Portland kid, Ben Gregg. Uh, can you talk about his development as a freshman? Yeah, hey, Ben's... Ben's been interesting because he he came out you know early with all the COVID situations and everything down here. It was uh, he was able he's smart enough and organized enough to to come early, and he had a real adjustments last year. I mean he jumps on a team that was rolling and number one team in the country and old, and here's a you know high school kid coming in halfway through and he really did a a nice job dealing with all that. And I know it was hard. He's homesick and as all of us would be. Uh, but he, he's he's behind some really 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 good players. But he's got a bright future at at uh, GU. He's done a great job. He's battled through some kind of tough injuries. I had a pretty severe ankle sprain, so that's been kind of limiting him. Uh, you know, this last month or so. But uh, um, yeah, again, you just at Gonzaga, if you just stick with the plan and hang in there, usually good things happen. There's just so many guys throughout the years on our roster that can can attest to that, and I'd definitely put Ben in that category. Last question. Julian Minnesota KZI here in Eugene. Mark, getting to play at your home state, what does the Crestwell community mean to you, and do you have a favorite Crestwell memory, I guess? 
Well, I grew up watching KEZI. It's good to know you guys are still in business. I don't, <laughs> <laughs> I don't feel quite as old. Uh, hey, look, I mean, it's, it's just awesome to be able to grow up in a small town. Cresswell is, you know, obviously we still get back there whenever we can. My mom and dad are still there, as well as my brother. And, uh, you know, my sisters are spread out and, uh, in Oregon also. And, and uh, no, I had great memories there and wouldn't have changed anything. Um, obviously, growing up the son of a minister was, was awesome, and especially in a small town. And, and just got some dear, dear friends that are still friends. And, and uh, I, I could never pick just one memory from there because I had so many good ones. All right, Coach Few, thank you very much. Yep. Good luck tomorrow. Yep, you got it. Reminder, everyone, that the press conference recording will be available in the NCAA Digital Media Hub at www.ncaa.verit1.com, and transcripts provided by ASAP will be posted shortly. Uh, we have a bit of a break. Our next availability will be with St. Mary's, and that will be at 2.45.